just share what's alive in you. What's interesting? Nothing this new, note. actually. Nothing new? It would, be, it would be something new if we uh, could go to the university, like in real life. Uh, yeah. Previous semester. It's actually, it's actually a question to Miss Natalia. Uh -huh. <laughs> Are you missing offline studies? Yeah. Mm -hmm. because it it inspires like to mm, study yeah. a bit more than in line Top. okay so now we have 53 students it's time to start okay so dear students we are glad to see all of you today but we really want to see you not just this black space <laughs> that's why please switch on your camera so we will be all together today speak about very interesting and new topic for you uh, this is very special topic which was created by Yelena Diomina she is uh, our speaker today so a few words about uh, our speaker today Yelena Diomina marketing consultant and uh, practitioner with more than 20 years in strategic marketing, brand management, and events. Currently, brand manager of service IT company S Pro. Uh, also, maybe you have already known her as uh, our instructor at um, some marketing subjects. So we will be very glad to start our entrepreneurship class in this semester from this uh, great speaker, Yelena. Thanks, Natalia. It's a warm... Uh... Uh, introduction and um, I hope that uh, I will not disappoint you after such a uh, prominent words about me of Natalia uh, and uh, this is intro lecture to a new class that I'm just invented for you um, and uh, the slogan of the class is everything you do matters and today we will talk about win-win communication so uh, Okay, let me let me introduce myself. My name is Elena Domina, and uh, I already um, had a practice uh, being a lecturer of uh, global marketing strategy in Con Con Concordia University. And it's true, I have more than 20 years of T-shaped career in uh, multinationals such as uh, Coca-Cola, British American Tobacco, Galina Blanca. And um, um, I conducted more than 100 events, more than uh, 20 communication campaigns. And uh, my background goes uh, to uh, three uh, high, like two high educations and one um, uh, specialized education. I graduated from uh, CNEL, uh, from international, uh, my first education is uh, International Christian University. This was the first uh, foreign uh, university in Ukraine. So I understand uh, you as a student because I already familiar with the 100% uh, rating and uh, US uh, scaling. Uh, second was master degree in um, CNEL, International Investment Management, and then Chartered Institute of Marketing, British uh, program at that time when I finished, it's more than 10 years ago, it was one of the best uh, in marketing in Ukraine. Um, what's more I can tell you, I worked with a lot of different brands uh, from the company side and from the agency side. And right now I'm working in SPRO, it's service IT company as a brand manager. And uh, my main duty is building employer branding. So it's, uh, I'm not focused on customers. Right now I'm focused on potential candidates because if you know the IT market, uh, it's a bit different from others. If uh, in other industries, um, candidates uh, running after the companies, in IT, it's different. Uh, recruit, uh, re recruiters are running after the candidates, and it's true. Um, what's interesting, I can add uh, to my specialization that um, 
I have been many years in yoga. You see the sign of um, Ukrainian Yoga Federation. It helped me uh, to change my 2D perception to 3D perception. And uh, it made me uh, become interested in, in psychology, in self-development. And um, uh, recently I was searching uh, for something new and uh, I found for myself NVC, nonviolent communication. Um, it, it's really make me like 4D dimension, a look into the world. Uh, I received um, two diplomas, one of the um, US uh, program by um, Nonviolent Communication Academy and uh, one by Yevarambola, it's a certified uh, European trainer who came from Hungary last year and uh, I have the practical uh, like offline and online trainings. So, uh, I'm still, you see, uh, don't know how to change the slides uh, in my notebook. Of course, uh, in my work, I use Mac and before I use uh, Microsoft mostly. So, what does it mean for you win-win communication? Can you just answer me any propositions? Any ideas? Um, yes. Hello. It's Yulia. Yes. Hi, Yulia. Win-win um, communication, uh, from my point of view, it is when both sides of the negotiations um, get approximately what they wanted and they are pleasant with what they get. So. Okay, great. Any other ideas? I'd say that it's not maybe what they wanted, but uh, both sides are pleased at the end of the communication. Great. Yes. It's maybe when, um, yeah, like Max said, two sides have maybe to, um, to decide on one problem and find the right solution. So the both sides uh, have some benefit. Okay. I can... I can give you the, I can give um, an ex example. So, yeah. so uh, for example, if you are like a huge supplier of uh, pens, yeah, and you are um, <clears throat> neg negotiation in the process of negotiations with some I don't know some uh, governmental task like to 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 supply pens to to every school in Kiev, yeah, for example. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, win win uh, case would be if. Uh, uh, a government uh, agreed with you on the best possible price and uh, why it has been to you because like you supply and you sell your pants to the uh, in a huge amounts so basically it would be win-win yeah. mm -hmm. great so i give you my uh short definition and then explanation it's finding solutions when all parties gain and now it's a description. What does it mean to gain? First, it's when people feel that their needs are 100% met. Second, it's when we learn and understand the needs of other people before starting to act. And third, it's agreements are transparent and without cheating, without hidden points. And fourth, it's when all parties are totally satisfied by communication without compromises. Um, it's an interesting point, and uh, I give you an example. Uh, when we had offline training of nonviolent communication by Eva Rambala, it's a European a train, a trainer who came to Ukraine. The uh, first 15 minutes of this training, it was offline training, we spent in discussions. Do we have to be in masks or without masks? And second question, um, is it necessary to translate your in, in Ukrainian or in Russian? And uh, some one person said, okay, let's vote. And uh, she said, do you want to be dominated by the majority? What does it mean? It doesn't mean that uh, voting it's like point of compromising. She found a solution that was satisfactory to everyone. Those who want to be in masks were in masks. 
those who want to be without masks were without masks uh, during our breaks, we uh, fresh out the, uh, the air by opening the window. And the first uh, half of the training was translated into Russian and second into Ukrainian. So that every party was satisfied. And there were more than 15 people in a group. It's a pretty big amount of people in one group to be satisfied. So she found a solution and she started her training like a role modeling, showing how it's possible. I think all of people was half satisfied, actually, not fully. No, no. Before starting, she asked everyone, does everyone satisfy? And until everyone said yes, uh, only after we started uh, the training. Of course, I understand that um, if you are in a group of 100, it's much more harder. But at least to try to find the solution, emphasizing as many people as possible, uh, it's the way to find this win-win solution. So uh, if you know, uh, we are planning to launch a class, a course of win-win communication in April. I will show you uh, what I see um, at the, let's say, at the part of this course. And I would like to receive your feedback because the course haven't been shaped yet. Um, my previous group of uh, third and fourth year students of global marketing strategy, they didn't have this chance because I was just given a name of the class and uh, I prepared it uh, by myself without considering the point of view of my potential students. And uh, as I'm a marketer and uh, I'm an adept of um, client-oriented approach and you are my clients, I want you to participate in creation of this course. So as soon as they sh I share with you all the information, I would like to receive your feedback and maybe you will uh, share with me any other topics that you would like to cover in this course, okay? So what we will learn? We will learn the evolution of communication and current communication strategies. Uh, there are several of them, uh, zero-based or win-loss or win-win. Uh, it's appeared in 80s of the century, uh, of, of 20th century, and it's about collaboration. And we will focus on them, especially on win-win strategy of communication. Uh, if you Google you will never, you will, you won't find win-win communication term. It was invented by me. Uh, why did I do it? Because I understand that I, I can, um, I have, a, I have a right uh, to share the information about nonviolent communication. But uh, as I'm not a certified trainer, and to be certified, it takes from two to five, and sometimes up to ten years, because. I wrote this full pack of uh, certification uh, information um, from Nonviolent Academy. And they say that we have to be sure that even if you go in out from nonviolent communication, you know how to come back. Therefore, uh, I named this course Win-Win Communication and add some communication strategies, basic communication strategies that people use in uh, management, marketing, communication, and so on. Second, I will tell you the basics of nonviolent communication, abbreviation NVC. And uh, these are only a few that I list. I found, um, uh, I named them uh, because I, uh, I think that they are one of the main, but there are much more. So, um, we will tell about four stages of communication process in uh, NVC. We will uh, learn feelings and needs and how to identify them, uh, how to give and receive empathy and self-empathy and how it can be helpful in communication. 
um, how to dissolve image of enemy, and you will understand why it's necessary in communication and how can you and your the opposite party, your opposite party can benefit from this. And also we'll talk about the pathways of liberation of self-assessment. There are um, something like 20 different uh, skills and uh, we will see uh, during the course, how you will develop your soft skills uh, listed in this uh, plan. And of course, a lot of practice, including Empathy Angel program. Uh, a few words about Empathy Angel program. Um, all participants of, the, of this course uh, will have a chance to be a part of, I think, uh, Natalia will tell us, is it possible to make group and, tele and telegram or we'll use Moodle for this, I don't know, preferably telegram. And if you need empathy, and I will later tell you what does it mean empathy, you will have a chance to call for empathy or to, provide, uh, or to uh, write that, okay, I am ready to give the empathy. Uh, and, this course, win-win communication, as a summary, is the mix of win-win strategy and negotiations. So if you Google, you will, you will find even just these terms, win-win strategy and win-win negotiations. Uh, second part, it's nonviolent communication, uh, basics and theory, and of course, uh, third part, big part, as it is uh, a practical course. Uh, it's about self-understanding. We will talk a bit about psychology and a lot of practices. So what will you receive after this uh, VVC, how I abbreviate this uh, course? Um, you understand, yeah, win-win communication. First of all, you will improve your soft skills. And you know that uh, soft skills uh, help, you, help you to become more attractive for employees. So in terms of um, gaining new job, uh, more proficient, let's say, you will be a um, more skilled person. Second, it's better understanding of yourself. Um, I hope that th this course will help you to understand yourself, maybe for some people even to accept yourself and feel yourself more confident about your personality and about your feelings and needs. Uh, what it will give you, it, uh, you will find, I hope that you will find out that your communication become, uh, become easier. Because when you understand your feelings and needs and feelings and needs of your, let's say, not opponent, but the other party, uh, you become less nervous, less angry. Uh, of course, what, yeah, any questions up to now? Uh, no, really. Okay. Uh, then you will have close relations with your classmates because you, you, you will practice in peers and in groups. And uh, this um, uh, Empathy Angel program will help you to see each other as a personalities. And maybe somehow in the absence of uh, offline education, you can uh, become better friends. Uh, through um, online communication because it was part of your homework. Um, empathy uh, angel groups are not obligatory, but very preferable for your self-development. Then um, you will learn and don't forget uh, to thank yourself. After this course, uh, I have uh, a note uh, in my telephone and mightly every day in the morning, I write down, I thank you for myself, one, two, three, three points. And when I feel not good, I recall about this, about this notes, I come back and I say, okay, I had great days, not so bad. Uh, you will don't forget to celebrate your big and small victories because it's very important. And uh, I will tell you that even the vector of development of employer branding, of internal employer branding in my company, 
it's uh, celebrating our victories and to share the information about them because uh, all people right now uh, sit in different places and they don't know how they, um, uh, let's say, they don't know what's good they can do as a group. They don't feel it until uh, someone can tell, hey, we did a great job. And uh, as long when we highlight it, it become more vivid and it will give the feeling of uh, connection, which is very important in uh, win-win and nonviolent communication. And as a result, I very much hope that you will become more balanced person. And you know that the balance between studies, work, your hobbies, it's very important uh, issue in right now, especially uh, after all this COVID uh, lockdowns and so on, because be being a balanced person, you will have less chance to be burning out. I understand that it's more for mature for those who work, but still, if you learn it in the very uh, first year of your education, you will be familiar and you will use these techniques for the whole of your studies and then in your work. So I think that you are lucky to have this course during the first year, because I very much hope it will help you in your general life in future. I also will use some basic uh, basics, uh, let's say from uh, my yoga studies. They are mostly about um, correct behavior because uh, uh, yoga it's a philosophy it's a lifestyle it's not about gymnastic only uh, it's also about your mindset and uh, i would like to share some of uh, prominent things that i learned from there and uh, they how they changed my life for better i will give you my examples uh, and uh, welcome to give you examples as long as your um, mindset will be shaping Okay, any questions? No, no questions. <clears throat> no, I wanted to ask some one uh, organizational question. So we will have this course starting from the April, yeah? As long as Natasha uh, gave me the information, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, thanks. And uh, I will have time to prepare a course uh, tailor-made for you. And uh, again, another question, Can it, will it... Uh... Will we get an email about it or something like this? So if we, is this optional? I'm just don't really understand in what form this course will be. Um, okay. I think that uh, you will receive uh, by Natalia or by Vladislav. Uh, yeah, no, I can respond to this question. Anastasia, she works with all bachelor degree courses. Uh, you have already sent uh, her applications form. So at the, I think at the beginning of March or at the middle of March, she also will send information about this course. And you just add this uh, course into your application form. So Anastasia will work with you if you want to add this course to your list. Uh, uh, so you can do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this is a fresh made course. It's uh, just from the knife. It's uh, a la carte, in, like in a la carte restaurant. So uh, you will have my email and uh, until the end of February, those who are interested will have a chance to give me a feedback and your request and I can try to add them in the course, okay? Okay. Great. So a few words about evolution of, of communication and about values. Um, I start from Sakrat. Why? Who knows? Why any ideas? Why do I start from Sakrat? He was a fancy model or something, I think. He was the in, he is the father of philosophy. Uh, from him comes the critical thinking because he first started to ask questions for the questions. Why do you ask this question? Why this idea come to your mind? Uh, what, go, what goes behind and so on? And if you know that in essence, 
uh, in ancient times, uh, debates were very popular. And the debates came mostly from Socrates. Uh, he didn't write anything Aristotle wrote after him. Therefore, thanks to Aristotle, we have all uh, Socrates works uh, up to current times. If you know that Socrates, uh, that Socrates finished not good, I think he was um, punished to death because he was too much uh, straightforward, insisted on uh, his ideas. Uh, we will be clever, more clever, and we will be more flexible, and nonviolent communication will help us uh, to understand how to do it. And uh, what we can take from Socrates, his famous phrase that an examined life is not worth living. So it's maybe, I don't know, I can't uh, tell you for 100%, but I realized that from Socrates came uh, first. Uh, the idea of examining life. Then we had um, the Old Te uh, Testament. Do you know what is it, Old Testament? It's part of the Bible. Yeah, there are two parts of the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. Uh, do you know what is the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament? I don't know really what is Bible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Old Testament was written before the uh, before Jesus and the New Testament after. Yeah. And one of the theses of uh, the Old Testament, as you know, is tooth for tooth, eye for eye. It's about revenge. And we know um, how Moses uh, was sent to Egypt land and uh, about Cain and Abel and about all these battles uh, between people. And um, also we can say that uh, um, uh, famous Shakespeare uh, Cap of Capuleti and second family. So it's, it's about uh, this love of two of young people from different. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's also about revenge. Um, yes, it still exists, but at the time it was the main model of communication. Then came the Christ, and the new idea of communication was proposed. Uh, and the new idea is was obedience. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Um, was it okay? Hardly to say. The later uh, later on, uh, psychologists uh, examined this topic and told that uh, if you are trying to be good for everyone. Uh, be ready for very, very hard uh, times. What does it mean? That, yeah, it's that times needed, uh, this uh, type of um, philosophy was needed for that time. But then the mankind evolutionated. And if we are looking on Renaissance, who, who knows anything about Renaissance? Who can tell me what a Renaissance is famous for? The red label. The red label? Okay, red, can you explain more? Red, red label, like music, no? I actually mm -hmm. heard about one. For what? Um, don't mind. And Fab? I know only Johnny Walker red label as the cheapest from- Not red Obama. label. Uh, my Microsoft is very like broken. I think. Okay. So what give us Renaissance? It's like uh, the worms after the medieval dark ages. Uh, it's like revival of uh, yeah. rhyme culture. Yeah, not from rhyme, from medieval uh, culture because rhyme was before the Christ. Uh, it was uh, uh, it was uh, Greek Empire, then Roman Empire with Alexander Makedonsky, then the wars, uh, and in the Asia it was uh, uh, the Old Testament. It's like from Jewish, yeah. So it's a more Asian part. Then uh, uh, Jesus came, uh, 
um, interest in that. At the same time, there were two religions, uh, Gnosticism and Christianity developing. And uh, Christianity, it became more popular. So right now we all have some Christian uh, mindset, even if we don't believe in uh, Jesus, even if we don't uh, go to church, we still have the imprints of Christianity in our minds. And, and later on in the course, I will tell you when. And uh, after that, we know this with fire and uh, uh, with fire uh, and knife. This is how Christians they conquer the world, and the wars in medieval ages, and then can renaissance like a, a, a fresh air to people. And it was the communication revolution. Do you know why? No. Any idea? Why, why, what again? Why, what? Happened? Why Renaissance is called communication revolution? Because invention of printing press, colonization, <laughs> yes, trade ways. I assume. <laughs> great, great. And with your words, any thoughts? I think it made the communication more like widespread it like more affordable great and because of invention of printing press because before all uh books were written uh by hand and uh, it hard to scale and with the printing press the scaling of information becomes much more easier uh then goes colonization um uh, opening of um, America uh, and uh, the colonization of um, uh, Spanish uh, uh, colonization uh, of uh, Latin America, and uh, then um, colonization of India by Brits, yeah. Uh, then uh, colonization of uh, Asia, so. And it gives the big uh, push to trade waste development. So the trading between countries became very, very popular. And uh, as, a, as a hobby, I also uh, finished the bartender course. And guys, I was really impressed how AlphaGo um, influence the development of uh, current culture, of current world. Um, because of the um, can, this um, black, uh, uh, black sugar, yeah, which was produced in Africa, in um, Latin America. Uh, this, and due uh, from this as a raw material was made Rome, yeah the trading become much more intensive. And uh, even Churchill told that Rome, uh, uh, Jean or Rome, I don't remember, saved more people during the First um, World War than med uh, medical uh, people. So colonization and trade ways uh, make people be more uh, intensive in traveling. And when you travel, you also start to communicate with different cultures. And we all know uh, that different nations, they have different cultural codes. And um, first you have to know the language of uh, the place you are traveling to, uh, to start to negotiate. And second, you have to understand their psychology. But at that time, people have no idea about psychology. And the next uh, great push to development of communication is the era of psychology and industrialization. Era of psychology came uh, with the psychiatric uh, theory of communication by Sigmund Freud. I think that everyone is familiar with Sigmund Freud, yeah? So he first, yeah. 
he first invented, uh, no, he first uh, wrote and taught about consciousness and unconsciousness. And knowing that we are not limited only by consciousness, give us a huge variety uh, of, uh, um, of methods um, of exploring our unconsciousness and consciousness. Uh, and of course, uh, it uh, had a great influence in communication. Because when you start to explore uh, human nature uh, from the psychological point of view, you understand much more interesting things and insights about yourself and other people. You understand why you behave like this, why other people behave like this, and psychologists help us greatly to develop uh, the communication we uh, use uh, in nowadays. Uh, here are some uh, famous war, uh, names, Carl Jung and his analytic psychology, Alfred Adler, individual theory of personality, George Miller with his uh, cognitive psychology. These uh, together with uh, the Sigmund Freud, they were the psychologists of first and second wave. Uh, which started at the end of 19th century and continued until the mid of 20th century. And then came a um, new wave, the third wave of psychologists together with uh, Eric Fromm. And he's one of my famous uh, psychologists. And uh, uh, his definition of love is my favorite among everyone. Uh, all other psychologists, he says that love, it's an active behavior of making other person happy. Uh, as, can as you as ask you a question? Like, yeah. Have you heard about like a famous, like a philosopher which has a great impact on the era of philosophy and industrialization, like Yasu Subibu, and from Latvia or something like No. I heard about that, maybe you heard. No. No idea. You can, uh, when you receive my email, you can send me the link. I can check. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can Google it like Yasu Subibu. Uh, for me, it's hard to, to hear. Yeah, from... I, I also have heard about him. Mm -hmm. But it is he from uh, Litva Poland. or Latvia? Poland. Ah, Poland? I don't know. It's, he's from it sounds Litva. like Poland. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Okay. So in our course, uh, our our course will not be about psychologists, but we will touch this uh, point um, because we will look uh, through all their studies just in general, without diving uh, very deep, just to understand the evolution. What we're interested we're interested in evolution. Why right now people come to collaboration? Why values, ethics is much more, uh, let's say, not even popular, but uh, necessary right now why, uh, than before? Any idea? No, actually, I don't really can you explain. Okay. Um, when people start to learn more about uh, people, uh, the humanistic approach appeared. It was um, invent not invented, but introduced by Eric Fromm. And he said to be one of the first humanists. After World War II, when many people were killed just for nothing, uh, people start, and with the industrialism, when the consumption, when when people start to consume uh, more than they need, uh, people start to think, "Hey, we are humans. What does it mean? Do we have to kill each other, or, or what?" And um, uh, if you know that uh, after World War, uh, United Nations appeared as the global institute of uh, peacemaking. Uh, because um, mankind started to understand if we would, if we are going the same way, 
we will kill our planet. It came not like this, this idea. It came step by step. Uh, with the invention of technology, with the globalization, we uh, people started to understand that we're spoiling our Earth. And uh, they started to understand that our negative emotions, uh, how they influence our life and the life of mankind in general. And therefore, different approaches started to appear in different parts uh, in the earth. Of course, you as, uh, as the leader, um, as um, we can say that in, in avant-garde of this process. And um, uh, one of also my favorite psychologists, uh, Viktor Frankl, who passed uh, through three or four Nazist camps and survived. In um, uh, his book, he shared the story, what made him survive? Why most of the people died and he survived? And it's not about physical health or luck. It's about your mindset, uh, mindset and about your values. If you have value, if you have, let's say, a goal to realize something, and he had a goal to um, uh, show to mankind his approach of existential psychology. And after he, he came out from the camp, he wrote uh, several of his uh, books, and he said to be um, the father of the third wave of uh, Austrian psychology. Of course, uh, uh, in terms of psychology, there are two main countries, US and Austria. And Austria, yeah, thanks to Sigmund Freud, because he established the psychologist school in uh, Vienna. Um, and um, right now, uh, human-oriented approach, people-oriented approach, customer-oriented approach are very popular. Why? Because people started to understand that if you focus on needs of other people, if you look after them, if you satisfy them, you are benefiting. You are winning as well. And this is win-win communication. And uh, uh, with IT development, internet and globalization, we see that uh, the information, to spread the information is very easy. Um, like you can make a uh, hype, and this hype can cover the whole world. But the idea is not just to make a hype. The idea is to change something in this life for better. And this is uh, the main idea of Marshall Rosenberg. And in his book, The Way of Life, uh, Nonviolent Communication, uh, he shared his thoughts uh, about uh, communication and how people can communicate uh, to have this win-win approach. Uh, why I like Marshall Rosenberg? Because, as I told you, we all are influenced by Christianity. And what Christianity told us, that we came from uh, Adam and Eve, and uh, Eve um, was biting the apple, which she was prohibited to do. And this was the uh, apple, let's say, the symbol of knowledge and they were thrown out from heaven. And Marshall Rosenberg, he said that, hey, who said that we came from, uh, from nasty people? Because uh, from the Christian point of view, all mankind came from see people, uh, from first people who seen. It means that in our psychology, we already sinned, we already uh, nasty, even by uh, given the birth. And he resaw this approach. And it, as for me, it's a great breakthrough. Why? Because if you think that you are guilty uh, by, the uh, by the birth, you will extrapolate this behavior to all your life. 
you will feel guilty uh, with your parents, in your work, uh, with your kids later on, and so on. And uh, the approach of Marshall Rosenberg helps us to overcome this uh, psychological, let's, let's say, we call it, uh, 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 let's say, uh, persuasion. Yeah, persuasion. yeah, some kind of persuasion. Okay, let's move forward. Oops, please, my beautiful computer. So MVC is a strategy for win-win communication. Uh, I just uh, found very funny uh, abstract about nonviolent communication. Uh, usually people say talk. In nonviolent communication, we say to connect, not to talk, but to connect. Uh, when we say good in nonviolent communication, we say live serving. When we say bad in nonviolent communication, we don't judge. We say it's a chuckle way of uh, communication, and I will explain why. I want, it means that my preferred strategy is that I'm not demanding. I just find my preferred strategy to act. Uh, when we say no in, in ordinary life, in nonviolent communication, it means I hear it is a demand from you. And we know that every person can ask. And do you know the difference between asking and demanding? Yeah. Yeah. Can you explain me? Asking is like gently asking for something, and demanding is like wanting like something from people, like forces yeah. them to do something for you. The main difference, the main difference is when you ask, you are ready to receive no, and you will not uh, feel bad about it. And when you demand, when you receive no, you are shocked. You have negative emotions. And this goes... I've seen the same concept like like this in the... Um, like really into a philosophy, yeah? And I've seen in a book of some Japanese like writer like Ya... Ya... Ya Butso Bak or something like There's the same concept. It's like pretty interesting. You know... Uh, I think that mankind uh, has come to a certain level of consciousness. And uh, similar, uh, similar studies uh, appearing, are appearing all over the world in different countries. As for me, for myself, I found out nonviolent communication. It doesn't mean that it is the best choice for you, but uh, as I already make it my uh, passes through my experience, I can share because um, if I uh, find this uh, Japanese philosopher, I yeah, can I, only I transmit so his ideas. But the main idea is not to transmit ideas, it's transmit the experience. Do you see the difference? Yeah. Okay. So when we judge, uh, we usually blame and say, it's your fault. And in nonviolent communication, uh, it means that I need empathy. Uh, and if person says for you, you are, uh, it's your fault, we understand that he's or she's weak right now and she needs empathy. If we look from this perspective, uh, we don't, we are not triggering by the person. We are not triggered by the person. Uh, when the person said, shut up, it means that listen with the giraffe ears, shut up. And I will explain you what does it mean, giraffe ears. And fuck off, it's get yourself some embassy. Um, I see I placed here, uh, pretty funny picture of Marshall Rosenberg. And I would like to tell you a few words uh, about Marshall Rosenberg, but first I'd like to ask Natasha, uh, do we have uh, like 20 more minutes? 
special material. Um, but maybe not more than 20 because yeah. Uh, yeah. it's already okay. seven. Uh, so Marshall Rosenberg is a, a clinical uh, psychologist uh, and also he's a peacemaker. He was invited to resolve the conflicts as a mediator in many, many uh, different regions uh, between Israel and Palestine, uh, in uh, African countries. And he all, mostly always found a solution uh, which satisfied both parties. Uh, in his uh, teaching, he used these uh, two Muppets, giraffe and uh, jaguar. Uh, any ideas why? Like actually, is it is it a jaguar you said? Yeah. Maybe because jackal, jackal, jackal. Ah, jackal. Yeah. No, jackal. I don't know then. Uh, Jirat has the biggest heart uh, from the animal world uh, compared to the uh, body weight. So uh, to talk like a Jirat, it means to talk from your heart. And to talk uh, as a chuckle, it means that uh, you are trying to bite. And one peep of why animals and also people try to bite others. It means that they are weak inside. So juggle, it means it, your weakness and you need uh, uh, more empathy. And empathy can be received only from heart, from um, Chirov way of communication. Uh, and there are four ways of reaction. Uh, using uh, giraffe and chuckle uh, ears, and I will tell about it later on. And now the circle of life from nonviolent communication, and it's about four stages how we communicate. First, we observe, uh, we make uh, observation, and we tell about our observations without any judgments or evaluations, because judgments and evaluations is already territory of juggle. And giraffe territory is just telling the pure facts without any of your additions of emotions. Then uh, the second step is needs. It's your values. Uh, I will show you later on uh, the list of feelings and needs, the basic ones, uh, which we will learn during the course. And these needs, um, you have to understand and your feelings help you to understand them. And then you tell the opposite party uh, about your needs without involving this party. You're telling about yourself. Um, and you then you sh you open your feelings and you say that I have this need and without satisfying this need, I have this and this feeling. Um, it's uh, not about perception, it's about your pure feelings. And if you think it's so easy to understand your feelings, you're not right. Uh, it took me several years to understand my feelings. Uh, before, even before nonviolent communication, uh, thanks to yoga, I know about feelings more and when they localize in our body, but it's uh, psychosomatic, it's a bit different. And third, uh, fourth step is you make an action, you request. So uh, you request emphasizing the other party. What does it mean? Okay, my son, for example, doesn't want to make his bed. And I come to him and uh, doesn't want to clean his room. And I come to him and say, hey, um, I noticed uh, five times during this week when I come to you at 10 p.m. that your bed wasn't uh, done. And uh, I calculated 23 plates in five days in your table 
three forks and uh, five packages of chips. It's my observation. Know my emotions, then needs. I have to tell him, hey, I have a need uh, and it's my, of security. I feel secure when uh, every part of my house is clean. Otherwise, I understand that we can have uh, different bugs. <laughs> I don't want uh, any to use any ch ch chemistry in our uh, house because we have a dog. And then I have uh, to show him my feelings. And I say, and I say that I feel very insecure and disappointed when every time I come to your room, I see this. And then I can ask his request. Uh, and I, I can tell him my request. Can I ask you to clean your room and uh, until 10 a.m. when I come to your room uh, so that it's clean without plates and with, make, with the bed which is made already. In this way, I have much, much, I have much higher chance to, uh, to receive positive feedback. Not immediately, I'm still working on this, but I'm on a halfway. Okay, this is NVC tree of life. Three focuses, options for connection. How we can connect with other people. Using empathy. Do you understand what does it mean, empathy? Yes. Yes. To feel the feelings of other people. Self-expression. So we're not blaming others. We are talking in the way of self-expression uh, uh, self and the self-connection. Self-connection, uh, I think you heard a lot about self-connection because this topic is very popular. And self-connection, it's understanding your uh, feelings, wants and needs. When you understand them, you can, this is your starting point. Then you go on from the starting point further in the communication with others. And here, uh, I, from one of the training, I have very interesting booklet. I like it very much. And I just want to share it with you. We'll explore it later on in the course, but just uh, to show you uh, what we will learn more in pictures. We will examine uh, what is happening in me this is about self-connection. What's happened, how I'm with this, and what is the reason behind it? Don't you uh, see family, like similarity with um, Socrates' questions? And, yeah, it's like some filtration of the question. <laughs> yeah. And what might be the other reason, feeling, and need? So we emphasize in ourselves and we emphasize in the other person. And then uh, how we uh, tell our self-expression and we will practice it orally and written in our lectures that I see here, this, this and these facts, I feel you list your feelings because I would like uh, you're telling about your needs, and then please, would you, and you are giving your request. And then you write your uh, realistic action plan, what should be done. And these four steps, you see they marked with the same color. First, I see it's observe and I hear it's observation. I feel it's feeling yellow because I would like its need. And uh, uh, like green it's request and uh, your feelings and needs um it's your empathic guess about other person because usually it's my experience shows that if you have feeling certain feelings and needs and the other person with whom you're feeling anger uh you don't understand may have the same feelings and needs and when you realize it you feel much more connected. And here is the list of uh, oops, feelings and needs, which we will explore during the course. Uh, sometimes when you start, it can be your uh, 
Spargalka. It's like it can be uh, the cheat sheet, sheet, I think. Huh? Cheat sheet. Cheat sheet, yeah, maybe. I have never known this word before. So it can help you to, to understand. You can go through this list and say, okay, what, what I feel, okay, which is my need doesn't uh, isn't satisfied. And then you have these four options uh, for hearing uh, a negative message. And this is about uh, Jaguar's and Jiraf's um, um, ears. And I will not tell you anything about it anymore, not to take your time right now and to make, to leave at least a small intrigue for the course. Uh, we also will uh, talk, talk about the process on transformation of anger F and uh, of uh, melting the, um, uh, the enemy. And the uh, self empathy process, we also will explore how to do it and uh, how it will help us to accept ourselves. At least for me, it was very much useful. This is all that I would like uh, to tell you for now. And uh, right now, I would like to have your questions. I understand that the level of your uncertainty is pretty high, uh, but we still have time. And I can try to answer your why, how, when, and other questions right now. Um, and uh, later on until uh, the end of February, I will gather uh, your um, feedback uh, regarding uh, any other topics you would like to cover in this course. I think the last thing is like very useful to analyze your feelings and thoughts. Huh? Um, uh, the last them, like the last uh, thing that you said to us, it's very handy to use it for uh, analyze your thoughts complexly. Uh, these uh, lists are, are useful for analyzing your feelings and needs because sometimes uh, you can't take it from conscience level. It's on your own consciousness, but you can't uh, immediately understand. <laughs> Do you know, like, uh, <laughs> this is a famous joke. Uh, there's a joke about the uh, Jewish son. Uh, mom is uh, calling, um, let's say, Bienia. And Bienia said uh, from the uh, garden, Mama, am I cold or hungry? <laughs> you know? <laughs> So, ah. I've got it here. It's like a very like classic joke, I would say. Yes, it's a classic joke that the person, yeah. especially if he's uh, under the pressure of adult, uh, for the person it's hard to understand what he or she really feels. And this list is helpful. Did, uh, did I answer your question, no? Yeah, you have. Uh, what's the joke? Can you explain, please? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay mama is calling you know the the the, per, the the boy is playing in the garden and uh outdoor and the mama i guess a uh, jewish mama is calling uh, her son Daniel. it's famous european anecdote yeah European, I know it's only as a Jessa one. Anyway, it's no matter. It's uh, I guess it's international city. But did you get the joke? <laughs> yeah, I guess as a yeah, Jewish person, I really Absolutely. like the jokes about like you know, like a Jewish people. It's very funny for me. Like yeah, I like Jewish people. Uh, the owner I'm of my also. company is a Jewish. He, his uh, um, second name is Israelievich, and he said, "Elena, I have such a second name." Everything uh, that gives us money is okay. It's when I ask him, can we, in, uh, can we do this activity or that? And he's very, very smart. So it's not the time positioning over. It's just... Uh, yeah, I think all these people are very smart. Yeah, I believe this. Uh, because it's, uh, there is a history behind this. But it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a do another time. You may ask me this during the course when we will uh, go through evolution. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, any other questions concerning uh, this course? 
I personally don't have any. The, okay. the only question that I have, but that I didn't get the joke. Maybe because I'm not a Jewish person. But <laughs> can I just Google it or something? Arseny, I will explain you later. Okay, yeah. thank you, bro. Yeah, you see, your friend is already feeling opposite to you. That's yeah, great. It's like Jewish moms are so caring, but they asking their children to go to home when they're wal walking around or playing on the playground. And her son like asked her his or her mom like, "I'm uh, hungry or cold, mom? Why I'm going to home? Why I should go home?" Okay, yeah, yeah, I yeah, got yeah. it. But yeah, what's what's the humor? <laughs> okay, <like? laughs> okay. I think that um, uh, um, your friends can explain you the humor, and we will not uh, make Halivar out of it. Okay, um, if any other question if you if any other person have a question regarding the course uh, maybe you have some concerns about the course and you'd like to share it you are welcome thank you okay so Yelena thank you very much for your information for this interesting presentation so dear students if you would like to join this course uh, as I have already said uh, Anastasia will work with you with your application. Uh, so you can join and it will be very easy. Just to add this course at your application form. And maybe that's all for today. If you don't have any questions, so really thank to our professor Yelena. It was a very interesting and new topic for our students and not just for freshmen, but also for third and fourth year students who also was were present to, today with us. Thank you very much. Thank you our students for your present today. So as usually our freshmen, you will write a short uh, essay. As usually you can find this information at the Moodle system. So we will wait uh, 10 days. So this is deadline for your essay. Uh, thank you for your attention and have a nice Excuse evening. Me. Should yeah. This thank you a lot for this. Would it be yeah. long, like, or short? Repeat, please. Should this essay be long or short? As usually, much better if you have around two, two pages for uh -huh, essay. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. And I have uh, additional special thanks for those who switched on uh, your cameras. I think yep. it's a new business code of conduct uh, with the camera. Yeah. Yeah, and this is very yeah. high culture <laughs> emphasize <laughs> because it's uh, much more interesting to work with real people. Yeah, but this very interesting yeah. time. That's why we very glad to see our students today and especially those who switch on comments. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Nice bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. You are the best person, Sarah. Thank, yeah. thank you very much. That's thank you. Bye.